Oh, so we've got Wayne Madsen now joining us, bringing some really great reporting, exposing what the mainstream media daren't tell us about the Clinton Foundation. And I really feel like getting this information out there, Wayne, is going to force them to have to see this pay-to-play slush fund operation that the Clintons have set up. So tell us about your latest report. Well, I'm not sure there's a cause and effect relationship here, but just I, I would note that just a few days after, maybe two days after I published this list of, of key foreign nations and key foreign corporations that had donated to the Clinton Foundation and its various other contrivances. Uh, and, and then I showed what those entities received in return as a way of favors from the State Department. Um, uh, it, it was just announced uh, yesterday that uh, the Clinton Foundation will cease accepting foreign and corporate donations uh, if Hillary Clinton becomes the next president. So that's uh, rather odd that they would have come out with that statement, you know, just after uh, that list came out. But uh, they're in a lot of trouble on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, didn't they agree that they were, weren't going to the Clinton Foundation, Bill Clinton wouldn't get involved while Hillary Clinton was there at the State Department. So they already made that promise yeah, no. one time. Now, all of a sudden, we should trust I, I saw that when I was reading through Drudge. I was like, really? I was like, you guys already said that once, and that failed miserably. So you expect <laughs> me to believe this all over again? Come on. And, and we are definitely driving the narrative there now. And, and Wayne, with this chart that you have uh, really laid it out, there's no denying it. You can go to Infowars.com and look at Wayne Madsen's really great article at chart Clinton Foundation donations linked to State Department favors. And you spell it out. It's right there in black and white for anyone who doesn't have the time to go through all of these additional private emails that have, have been released. Uh, Prince uh, uh, Abu Dhabi and foreign minister of the United Arab Emirates, uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed al Nayahan, <laughs> they, they donate 5 million so they get access to Hillary Rodham Clinton at the State Department, 500,000 environmental speech by Bill Clinton given at the Emirates Palace Hotel, uh, state clearance for U.S. arms sales to Algeria there with their donation. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> so what do you think people really need to understand about, let's say, te the Tenio Holdings firm, for instance? Well, Tenio is re very problematic because the guy who founded this Tenio which is a lobbyist slash uh, investment firm uh, slash uh, private in intelligence company with offices in New York, London, and uh, elsewhere around the world. It was started by Doug Band, who had been Bill Clinton's personal aide uh, after Clinton left office. Uh, so he is very much part of this Clinton Foundation infrastructure. Huma Abedin was basically double dipping, getting a State Department salary as Hillary Clinton's personal assistant, while she was also drawing a paycheck from Tenio Holdings in New York. So uh, we have this interlocking uh, situation between the Clinton Foundation, Mrs. Clinton at the State Department, and this private entity, Tenio Holdings. Now, I compiled that list from open source information from uh, uh, emails that have been released, other information. Uh, some of it had been uh, hacked into and released. Some of it was in some news reports. But uh, if I could get that from open source, I just wonder what the National Security Agency's finance and commerce branch has in the way of in very incriminating uh, information on the racketeering that was obviously going on, the pay-to-play scheme uh, run by the Clintons uh, when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. Uh, you know, if I could get that much from open source, I just have to think that the NSA finance and commerce operation, which tracks people to wait with, they, they follow the money and they follow the people. They must have quite a uh, interesting uh, database of uh, Clinton Foundation activities. The problem is, is that we've seen key intelligence officers uh, retired uh, come out and support Hillary Clinton. Mike Morrell, the former acting director of the CIA. Uh, we've had Michael Hayden, the former NSA and CIA director, say nice things about Clinton. He's actually showing up on a 
on a Clinton ad right now on television. Um, and um, so um, we got to think that the intelligence agencies are supporting uh, the Clintons. Absolutely. And as Donald Trump pointed out in his speech, that reckless decision making by the politicians has often come about due to personal profit. It's not just here in our own country, but this pay to play, it's also affecting people in other countries. Perfect example, you point out here, Walmart Inc. donated $5 million. And in return, uh, Clinton pressured the Indian government to open up India to Walmart, which this was an action that was opposed by India's small retailers. So here you have people, they know, just like here in our country, these small businesses, these mom and pop shops, they get pushed out and shut down as soon as one of these big Walmart retailers comes in. Uh, we've also seen Haiti and how the people there in Haiti are very upset with the way the Clintons did or did not uh, failed to help them there. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton's brother gets access to a gold mine there in Haiti. Yeah, the, the Clintons have, uh, it, it's one of the worst things they've done is they've used Haiti, which has been devastated by er an earthquake, by repeated uh, hurricanes, uh, by uh, political upheaval. The Clintons have used Haiti as their personal cash cow. The poorest country in the Western Hemisphere used by the Clintons as their personal cash cow. And of course, Bill Clinton uh, he's he's uh, operated as the U.N. Special Envoy for Haiti. And just like his wife, as Secretary of State, he used that position to enrich himself. Uh, Haiti used to be a net exporter of rice, for example. It's now an importer of this awful bleached rice from Arkansas. Why? Because the Arkansas Rice Growers Association has been longtime contributors to the Clintons, both Governor Bill Clinton and his presidential campaigns, and then uh, Hillary Clinton and her presidential campaign. So what happened with Haiti's rice industry, it was destroyed. Now they have to import this cheap Arkansas uh, crap. Uh, it's not nutritional whatsoever. It's almost like Franken food. It's it's uh, genetically modified. I mean, look at Bill Clinton. I mean, obviously there's something going on with the rice there. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's got his soul sucked out of him though. Yeah, yeah. So we went and not only had problems with, you know, Condoleezza rice and and now Susan Rice, our national security advisor, but major problems for Haiti with Arkansas Rice. Yeah, and, and people are really beginning to hold them to what they said that they were going to do, helping these countries. I mean, Haiti, more than 100,000 people died there. So many people still are living in tents. What did they do with all of this money besides enrich themselves, enrich their own family members, and they don't want us to ask these questions? Now, Wayne Matson, when we get back, I want to ask you, you know, what do you think is, is the key, the key thing that people should take out of this list? What do you really see as a really damaging sort of pay to play action here? And then we're also going to get into uh, the George Soros story and how Soros was giving global grants to fund these Muslim migrants, uh, this takeover of the West. I mean, he has got his claws in so deep here with all of this. So Wayne Madsen, stick around. We're going to get to that. And you're going to find all the breaking news at Infowars.com. Stick around. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Alex Schoen Show. I am Leanne McAdoo, joined in studio by Joe Biggs. Rocking out. I'm jamming out. This is my tune. I was actually <laughs> listening to this on repeat last night for quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. Well, we are speaking now with our Infowars investigative journalist, Wayne Madsen. And we've been talking about... Uh, the coordination between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department. Go to Infowars.com and take a look at this chart as we're talking about it. Uh, it's at Clinton Foundation donations linked to State Department favors. That's the article at Infowars.com. Now, Wayne, what do you think is the key takeaway here? Um, you've obviously had to sort through a lot of emails and, and build this chart, but what do you really think people should focus on? Well, the fact is, is that uh, it's like everything the Clintons are involved with. It's for their own personal enrichment. Uh, you remember uh, there was there were even reports when they left the White House in uh, in two, January 2001 that a lot of White House uh, de uh, de decorations and <laughs> the China artifacts went went with them. I I wonder if she gets elected in November whether they'll be returning some of those to the White House, but. Um, but yeah, this is just a, a, it's a constant theme with the Clintons. 
it's it's what's good for them and uh and you know and everyone else can really just go to blazes as far as they're concerned the other thing they do is when they get in trouble you notice they always surround themselves with all these uh aides and and advisors and then when when they get caught they blame the aides and advisors so uh, look huma abedin might think she's on solid ground with hillary clinton today but that may not be the case uh you know in a couple months if there's any kind of investigation of what went on same thing with doug band Atenio. the clintons will throw their own friends under the bus i mean james mcdougall uh, well, today, Foster, today, worse than under the bus. <laughs> today on USA Today, they post an article. Clinton told FBI that Colin Powell advised her to use her personal email. Right. So there you go right. again, so, deflecting and trying to duck and dodge and and put the blame on someone else. Like, look, yeah. you're the head of state. You're an adult human being in a professional job. You know what the hell you're doing. You know right from wrong. Yeah. Stop trying to put it on someone else. You're not Leave Colin Powell alone. Grandma. She's just like, oh, I'm a sweet little old grandma now, and I just don't know. It, it's amazing. We can have an entire private server. We can have an entire room just full of articles of every criminal thing she's ever done. Her and her husband, and no one wants to talk about it. They want to talk about a swimmer or a dead gorilla or, you know, some new rap video or something like that. It's ridiculous. Meanwhile, guess what? The president's playing golf, and Donald Trump is personally helping people down in Louisiana that are victims of all these floods going on. He actually told people today that didn't have flood insurance that he would donate to them to help them out. That's presidential. Right. They, they told the president, current president, don't even... Clinton, Clinton would go down there and say, donate to our foundation, we'll help you guys out, and then they're going to buy some new stuff. He also won up uh, uh, George W. Bush, who we remember after Katrina. The closest uh, look he got of Louisiana was from Air Force One at around 30,000 feet. Well, that's the thing, though. People attacked Bush for that, but no one's really attacking Obama. The fact that he's out playing golf, no one's, no one's like even touching that. I don't get it. Well, well, he's actually been having to... I mean, I, 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 know, it, I know it takes away from the whole thing, but still, though, the fact that... I know, it, I know it makes it more difficult for first responders and all that trying to do their job down there. Yeah, But still, got... though, like, you know what? Put the golf clubs away. You played enough golf, man. Do he your does job. It all the time. It's like, oh, there's another beheading. Oh, there's a flood. Well, I, I'm sorry. I got I to gotta go play golf. That's, well, that's his go-to. But luckily, we only have a few more months with President Obama in office. So, Wayne Madsen, I, I definitely want you to stick around after the break. We're going to be entering the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. Joe Biggs is going to stick around. Maybe we'll take some of your phone calls as well. But I really want to get to uh, this George Soros story, being behind the Muslim takeover of the West. All right, welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. You have now entered overdrive. Myself, Liam McAdoo, and Joe Biggs will be here with you for the remainder of this hour. We're going to be opening up the phone lines to take your calls here at the bottom half. Now, we have been speaking with InfoWars investigative journalist Wayne Madsen, right? Uh, before the break, we were really kind of getting into the coordination between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department. But now I want to shift gears and talk about George Soros. Now, he is got his little meddling hands in everything. And now, thanks to some new leaks, some hacktivists, we see that he's behind the Muslim takeover of the West. So, Wayne Madsen, give us the details. Well, very interesting uh, internal Soros Foundation report was uh, leaked, I guess, as a result of a, of a hacking uh, incident. And, it, you know, it really doesn't matter to me whether it's Russian hackers or it's WikiLeaks or it's, you know, Guccifer 2.0, 3.0, whatever that is all about. As long as we get these documents, this is the transparency, by the way, that Mr. Obama promised us when he became president. Of course, we never saw it. We, as a matter of fact, we saw more whistleblowers go to prison under Obama than any other of his predecessors since Woodrow Wilson combined. Uh, and um, so uh, we've got this internal report, and I really think that this, it, it, what surprised me is that Soros's people, and he, of course, who funds these operations, were talking about taking advantage of migration corridors and two initially were cited from uh, Central America and Mexico into the United States and from the Middle East and North Africa into Europe. This is the first time we've seen a linkage between 
the migration into the United States by mostly Hispanics and the migration into Europe from the Middle East by mostly Muslims. You know, if Donald Trump uh, plays his cards on this one right, he can link the issue of the wall to what he also has said is that Hillary Clinton will become another Angela Merkel. She, of course, allowed all these people, over a million, to come into Europe. If he can, if he can link, well, we, we know that Soros' document, it does link the two. And he also then talks in the, in the document about creating new corridors, uh, including one that's managed by one of the co-authors of the report. Uh, and that is from Eurasia into uh, Russia and Europe. So this is what he's doing. He's advocating illegal massive migration on a global scale to basically change the ethnic makeup of various countries as we see what happened what's happening in Europe and is what's happening in the United States. And uh, I think this is an amazing revelation from this document. As I say, it links, uh, in, in the past, people said, well, you can't link uh, Hispanic migration into the United States to what's going on in Europe. Yes, you can if you read this Soros document. It's, it's clear cut uh, that the two uh, illegal migrations are linked. And there's other migrations um, that have been started and others that are planned. Well, wow. And I, I it's funny because I see a lot of people, uh, I, I, they must be sock puppets, they must be trolls, but they come out and, and say, George Soros is a good guy. And he's just trying to give the little people the money and the funds that they need to help take down the globalists, the elitists that, that want to rule their countries. He, that's why he's destabilizing these nations. Well, I'll tell you, yeah, there's a lot of people in think tanks and policy laundry operations in Washington, London, and around the world whose salaries are dependent on Mr. Soros. Uh, so you yeah. take the king's gold, you do the king's bidding. Right. No, exactly. And this is, and that's exactly why we've seen a lot of activists going to the Trump rallies, going after him, rather than going after their actual opponent at the time, Hillary Clinton. And that's why we see what happened uh, there with Bernie Sanders. Stick around. We'll be right back after the break, speaking with more on George Soros. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. I am your host, Leanne McAdoo, here with Joe Biggs. And you out there, you are the resistance. Thank you so much for joining us here into this fourth hour. Now, we have been speaking with our investigative journalist, Wayne Madsen, talking about George Soros, how he's got his meddling hands in everything. And key takeaway from this report is... is is how he's giving these global grants to open up the floodgates for this illegal mass migration. We've, we're seeing how that's destroying Europe. And a lot of people, whether they want to admit it or not, are actually in support of Donald Trump's plans to, A, build the wall, but also curb this um, open migration from uh, people from these countries with terrorist ties, that we have to make sure that they are ideologically lined up with American values. So Wayne, get into these global grants. Well, <clears throat> when you read this leaked Soros report, it's interesting. Um, I, I put uh, basically put all these uh, organizations, these NGOs are all involved in uh, basically trying to change national immigration law to either weaken it or get, a, get rid of it or telling people how to evade it, to, uh, how to evade border controls. Now, one of the key individuals that the Soros people is working with is a guy named Peter Sutherland. That may not be a household name to a lot of people, but he is the uh, former director of GATT. That was the forerunner to the World Trade Organization. He's now the UN Special Envoy for, for refugees and migration. He's also a former um, uh, uh, a chairman of Goldman Sachs International. Okay, so... Uh, you know, who, who was Hillary giving all those speeches for, making all that money? Goldman Sachs. Uh, Heidi Cruz, who does she work for? Goldman Sachs. She got booed, basically, by people who were also, also yelling Goldman Sachs at the convention in Cleveland. People are starting to wake up to this, but when you see this report, you see, uh, you know, who, who are these players that are involved? And basically, they're undermining uh, national sovereignty by basically saying, look, you can get around border controls, we can weaken these immigration laws to allow this mass migration. What's the end goal? Well, we know what Merkel is. Uh, her goal in Germany is to get more cheap labor.
but what she's going to sacrifice for that is the German uh, nation as we've known it, a, a basically a Christian uh, democratic, not, not the party, which he's the uh, head of, but a Christian and democratic nation uh, with a, a you know strong tradition of um, uh, culture, uh, which will all come crashing down uh, with uh, this influx of uh, Muslims. Who, by the way, um, they're not they're not going to be changing their religion. They're looking at Germany to change its ways to become more like a Sharia law state, uh, and uh, that's going to cause major problems in Germany and other European countries. Um, and uh, the only thing I can see stopping this is when the, the, if you see where Soros puts his money, he hates populist uh, parties. He, he, hate, he hates the UK Independence Party and the Brexit. He hates people like Boris Johnson, the new foreign secretary of Britain. He hates Le Pen in France. He hates, he hates the alternative for Deutschland, the anti-immigration party in, in Germany. If we, can, if we see these parties come to political power, that may start to spell the end of Mr. Soros. Absolutely. And of course, continued hard hitting journalism uh, from journalists such as yourself, Wayne Madsen. The establishment's afraid of Donald Trump, but I think they're afraid of you as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us with the show today. That's Wayne Madsen at WayneMadsenReport.com.